Labor Day. I hope that you are enjoying the day off of work. You are tuned in to Talk of the Town on WDBX 91.1. I am your host, Eva Fisher, Public Relations Officer for the City of Carbondale. And I have some uh, very exciting special guests in here today. I can't wait to introduce you. But first, let me just give you a couple announcements of things coming up around town. So, if you haven't heard yet, we have kicked off our Off the Rails concert series in downtown Carbondale. We've had a couple really awesome weekends of shows already and lots of exciting shows ahead, including some paired up with some other festivities. The Hemp Hops and Shrooms Festival is coming up on September 28th. And so this is a full day event. It'll start from 3 to 10 p.m. We have professors from SIU Cannabis and Fermentation Sciences Department coming to give demonstrations and presentations, some also local community members, some mushroom farmers teaching you how to forage and cook with mushrooms and all sorts of vendors. And if you are a vendor that is interested in signing up for Hip Hop and Shrooms or any of our other Off The Rails concert series, there's still time to do so through the whole season. So you can visit CarbondaleMainStreet.com or you can visit our city website, City of Carbondale Government, or our tourism website, Carbondale Isle Tourism, on the Facebook page. And you will see the form so you can sign up. Because we also have another very exciting event coming up with Off The Rails Concert Series. On October 11th, we're pairing up with the SIU Alumni Association and River Radio, and we are shutting down the strip. And we are having a special homecoming weekend concert right in the heart of downtown Carbondale. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And um, you also can sign up to volunteer if you wanna be a part of the behind the scenes action of these events. We also need volunteers. So you can find all that info in the same places I mentioned previously. Um, a really awesome event that is coming up on September 4th in Visiting Justice 618 is um, launching this this inaugural event called Celebrating Justice and um, it's at the Healing Soil Urban Farm. Lots of acronyms going on here. Soil like Southern Illinois, herb like the plant, but you know urban here in town, here in the city. That's at 422 East Jackson Street. They're going to be roasting sunflower seeds and really uh, doing some other cool things with different herbs and spices. And this is being put on through uh, a few organizations, Beyond the Walls, Illinois Humanities, and Envisioning Justice. So a really awesome program. They're going to be helping people transition from um, being incarcerated to, you know, transitioning back into day-to-day -day life. And this is welcome to everybody to attend this event. So really excited to see this work launching here in our community. All right, that is all I have for announcements. And now I want to get into a conversation with my guest here. I have Celia Pulido and I have Jeff Hansen from the SIU swim team here with me today. Good morning. How are you two? Good morning. I am good. Morning. Yeah, thanks Wonderful. for having us. Yeah, thank you so much for being in here today. Now, um, you're part of the SIU swim team, but this summer, you, you know, you did something kind of cool. You went to the 2024 Paris Olympics and you were a part of an Olympic swim team. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is just so awesome. Uh, how fun to, to have an Olympian here in the WDBX studio today. Yeah, so, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for taking the time here. So I, I want to hear every detail about this journey. I want to hear about, uh, you know, kind of when your competitive swim career started, how you got to SIU, and um, how your training at SIU helped prep you to go to the Olympics this past summer. Yeah, right now I'm a student athlete on uh, the swim team here at SIU. And I started my uh, swimming career when I was 10 years old. Um, awesome. I started to compete at a state level and then national level. And when I turned 14, uh, I started internationally. And um, it has been so fun. Um, I've enjoyed every single far, part. And you know, it's just like uh, I started in Mexico uh, back home when uh, a coach just uh, saw my talent and he told me that I was good at it and uh, we could do good things. So 
Uh, since then, my parents have supported me and I've been uh, doing this uh, almost like most of my life. And um, after high school, I got recruited by Jeff, my uh, coach, and I got here to SIU three years ago. Um, and since I came here, I just found uh, more passion about my sport, more passion for competing and prove myself that I can uh, do good things and also uh, achieve my goals uh, with the team, with the help of my team and also uh, find that uh, passion to represent uh, SIU and also my country. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this summer I was able to qualify to the Olympic Games in Paris and it was such an experience. Um, I loved every single part of the Olympics, it was really good. I love the, 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 the city, the atmosphere of the Olympics, and it was just really fun to be there. Yeah, I bet. I mean, it's one of the biggest celebrations in the world that brings the whole world together. And yeah, you said you swam for your country. You were on the Mexico swimming team, yes? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, fantastic. And that is just, that's so cool to me because um, SIU is, has such a large, international presence. There are so many students from all over the world at SIU. So I just think it's so neat to have a student from SIU get to swim from from their home country. You know, bringing that global representation to the swim team is, is such a just really big factor and just shows, you know, what SIU can house and, and what SIU can do for our community. Yeah, uh, for sure. SIU has always shown the support for people outside of America. Um, mm -hmm. They give scholarships and all this uh, support for us to be able to be here and uh, live in another country and at the sa same time achieve our goals um, uh, in like our major in what we want to do professionally and also in sports. It's always that I always appreciate about SIU and that makes it even more special. Yeah, how cool. Um, now, Jeff, how long have you been coaching at SIU? So I'm starting my sixth year as okay. a head coach. Fantastic. <laughs> and this isn't the first time that you have coached a team where one of the athletes has gone to the Olympics. Yeah, I've been I've been lucky through my career. I, this is this is my 25th year in college swimming coaching. I also swam in college with mm -hmm. you know, with a number of Olympians at the University of Arizona when I was an athlete. So, um, yeah, just been fortunate through my career. I spent 12 years as an assistant head coach at Wisconsin and uh, was was um, the coach of an Olympian for the U.S. team in 2004. So that was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. I just messaged her last week. It was the 20th anniversary of her. Her competing in the Athens Games, awesome. uh, and then um, through my career, other other international Olympians. Um, I spent a couple of years as an associate head coach at Arizona back at my alma mater, and uh, had two kids make the not kids, but <laughs> two <laughs> athletes make make the U.S. team uh, in 2012 to London, and a couple of others, uh, one for South Africa. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's it's I've been really lucky to be around some special athletes throughout yeah. my career. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm just kind of curious, like, do you, do you ever have like a notion of when you meet a certain student athlete and start coaching, like, we're going to get this, this student to the Olympics? You know, I mean, uh, with, with Celia, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we knew she was very, very talented, came from a fairly small city in Mexico, not, you know, not from uh, a major metropolitan area. So we knew in her background and training that there was more room to grow mm -hmm. um, and that she was one of our top recruits that, you know, that we've had here in my time um, <clears throat> and did some really, really good things through her freshman, sophomore year. Uh, but it was really this year, her junior year, that she really broke through during the college season uh -huh. and that kind of gave us, um, not that we didn't see it in the back of our minds, you know, going into, into her time here. But this year, really, just a breakthrough in the college season that, that said, okay, you know, she's really got a chance to, to do what she needs to do to, to get to get to the Paris Games. Yeah, how awesome! So, do you mind sharing with how does that process even work? How do you go from all right, I'm swimming for SIU, I'm winning these competitions, 
do you, do you audition for the Olympics is it, or a tryout? Excuse me, I have a theater background. Um, what what's it like to to that process to get to the Olympic team? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in my case, um, every country is different. Um, some countries you gotta go to like several meets to qualify or you can just like uh, go to one and qualify in that one. So in my case, that is Mexico. Um, I just had to go to one meet in Mexico or yeah, it was in Mexico. Uh, it was the only option. And that was the final one. Literally, it was the, the week before the, like the due date of qualification was. So in my case, uh, well, I was um, like, competing here um, doing my season and uh, after NCAAs I continue training. Uh, I stayed here trained because I had this need that was gonna give me the pass to go to the qualifying one to Paris. So uh, I practiced all this time and then I went to Mazatlan that is a city in uh, Mexico and there I raced a couple events um, and that those events gave me the pass to the qualifying meet. And this meet that I'm talking about was a month before the qualifying one. So um, uh, I went there, I came back and continued practicing. I didn't, we didn't miss any day. And uh, the qualifying meet, uh, all the, um, the swimmers that wanted to qualify had to be there. Uh, you were able to skip it or decide to not go if you already, if you were already qualified. Okay. But most of the swimmers were not, so we all met there, and uh, yeah, we just were there for like five years competing, and uh, so yeah, it was like that process. But at the same time, I was uh, done with um, my season here at mm -hmm. SIU, and you have to go to. A meet that is like, mm, like proof to be qualified. Yeah, awesome! Wow, sounds like a very, very arduous experience. It takes takes a lot of commitment all year round. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I love. I I read your interview in the DE, and I liked what you said. You're like, um, but whenever I got here to SIU is when I started to train with the mindset of going to the Olympics. Yeah. Can you kind of tell me just just about that, about that perspective and that journey? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, since you start doing a sport, you wish, you have the desire of going to the Olympics. It's like the dream of every athlete. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I said that whenever I came to SIU, my mindset uh, literally was set for the Olympics because um, I I was able to see the talent that people told me I had I have um, yeah. because yeah I I heard people saying that I had the talent to swim fast be a, like a really good swimmer but it never gets to your mind you know you mm -hmm. just hear it but it's like eh, maybe yes maybe not yeah but here Jeff and uh, all the staff and my team um and made me believe that and as i was racing as i was like training i was like getting better i was improving details mm -hmm. and i was just like getting faster every time yeah and uh, when i came here i i just enjoyed uh, the practices i i realized how mm, our program uh, really works and how this can make me like achieve that uh, Olympic um, dream. Yeah. So, um, yeah, um, so Jeff was basically the one that made me realize and like um, really um, push myself to uh, really get that goal. Yeah, oh my gosh, that is awesome to hear. What a, what a testament. And yeah, just like you said, because you can have that talent, you can have that skill, and you could even have a team or a coach that's like, all right, we've got the still skill set, mm -hmm. but I don't know, what I love about SIU and Carbondale is it's got that 
that really tight knit community feel mm -hmm. where you feel that support. And that yes. sounds like that was such a huge factor of what mm -hmm. was able to shift your mindset to get you there. It was like, all right, I got someone who believes in me yes. and is going to back me up and we're going to make it. We're going to get there. Yeah. So how cool. Yay. Go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I want to I want to hear about your time in Paris. What's it, what's it like being in the, one of the largest cities in the world when one of the largest events of the world is occurring? <laughs> it was uh, really nice and fun. Um, I got there before the Olympics started, like probably two days before. Um, but swimming was not gonna start the first day that the Olympics started. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I got there, I, uh, I was staying at the village, and since the moment um, we arrived to the airport, everything was just like, it felt like the Olympics. Yeah. There were like, like customized cars that had like the logo of Paris 2024, uh -huh. and also they were designed, designed, designed new. Uh, for the athletes and like okay. all these people that were gonna participate. So they made us feel like we were uh, at home. Um, they showed all the support. Uh, they were very nice and they took us to the village. And also in the village, there's, there was people that was helping you all the time with whatever you need. And I mean, the village was just huge. It was like a small town. Okay. Uh, it was like campus size. Uh -huh. So yeah, you had, uh, there were like golf carts that you can, you could take. Uh, to go around uh, the village, but yeah, you were able to walk to, mm -hmm. and you had everything there. You had dining hall, um, entertainment center. Um, also, there was like a nail salon, a hair salon. Nice. So yeah, you can like have fun there too. <laughs> it was not all about pressure, about sure. like competing, and the atmosphere of the Olympics can be like really stressing. But also, you had yeah. resources to get out of your of that stress mm -hmm. yeah no so um yeah like we had buses that took us to the pool or wherever we needed to go well so it was just like it felt like mm, everything was like set for you to um succeed uh, at the olympics and yeah i mean i had a really good time at the village i met uh, a lot of people and also I got to know more my teammates mm -hmm. and like also uh, Mexican girls and boys from another sports because yeah. we were in the same building and yeah it, it was it was just such an experience that it's different from what I'm used to be like here and also in Mexico it's just like another level mm -hmm. and yeah I, I mean it's just uh, really nice that I had the chance to live that moment. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure that that's one that will stay with you forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeff, um, what's it what's it like being at the Olympics as a coach? And I know you had some other folks from SIU with you. Yeah, um, my associate head coach, John Ferguson, and his wife made their way over. Um, our athletic trainer, who ha already had a trip planned to Europe uh, before so they qualified and then was said, you know, I'm going to get the train the morning of her event and make it over there to watch her swim. Because awesome. I'm five hours away, you know, in Germany and yeah. I'm get over and, and see it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't stay in the village. I stayed in a hotel across the street from the pool. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> nice. you know, really just spent the time uh, up until up until her event uh, between the pool and the, the hotel and, you know, exploring a little bit, um, but mostly and I know, I know she, her, her time up until her competition day was all spent practicing, you know, preparing, yeah. resting. Um, she, she had some time afterward, a few days to tour around. I, I came back uh, home the next, the next day after her event. Oh, wow, okay. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's really special, to, uh, you know, as a coach to have an athlete there and then just to be in that atmosphere of, mm -hmm. of you know, athletes and coaches from all the world, um, uh, you know, some with, some there with the aspirations of meddling or, or semi-finaling, things like that. And then, um, you know, some of the smaller countries who, who really don't, don't feel they have a chance for any of that, but it's just the experience of being there. And yeah. um, so it's, um, <clears throat> there is a lot of pressure with it. You know, it's yeah. the biggest swimming, uh, you know, every four years swimming comes around to the forefront and gets a lot of publicity. And mm -hmm. this is because of that, this meet. And um, so there's pressure there, certainly. Uh, 
but um, I think as much as anything, it's it's a once in a lifetime, maybe not once, maybe twice, maybe more, <laughs> it, it, you know, in a lifetime experience to go enjoy it. Um, you know, right down to the opening ceremonies. I don't know if you watch those on TV. I did I mean, watch really, some of those. Yeah. yeah, really unique opening ceremonies. Um, and uh, you know, we talked about should Cecilia go to that? You know, or do you need to stay home and rest? And like, hey, you know, you're here. If you competed the next day, I'd say maybe stay back and rest, uh, but it was a few days later, so go experience that. I mean, take it all in. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, how fun. Ooh, what was your favorite part of the opening ceremonies then? <laughs> My favorite part, I think, it was whenever we um, got to the Eiffel Tower, because mm -hmm. we were all the time like in the boat, um, um, just like to get to the Eiffel Tower. Uh -huh. And we had a whole show at the Eiffel Tower. We There were like like uh, people dancing and also uh, like all the flags coming to the stage yeah. and also like the Olympic flag. Mm -hmm. So uh, they had all that. And then after they did all the speeches from uh, the like the important people from, uh, from the comedy, from Paris and all that, uh, the Eiffel Tower had a whole show with lighting. Um, mm -hmm. They had like LEDs uh, attached to the eight, to the tower, tower, <laughs> and um, yeah, it was with music. Uh, it was like the lights were dancing with the rhythm of the yeah. music, and also we were able to see whatever was going on also in like uh, in another spot. Like mm -hmm. we had screens that we were able to see Celine Dion or like nice. the dancers or also like um, there was like a horse that was like, <laughs> I don't know, it was like a scene. Yeah. So just like whenever we got there, I think was my favorite part. It was very special. How cool. I was going to ask if you saw Celine Dion. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. How cool. Yeah, what a production. It just sounds like... Um, I've had just kind of a surreal experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know, um, you know, in this interview you did for the paper recently, you were saying it still felt surreal, like hadn't maybe yeah. really hit yet. But like, I'm an Olympian. I competed. How, how are you feeling now? <laughs> yeah, it's something that, I don't know, it just feels weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm that person that doesn't, like, if big things happen to me, mm -hmm. like, I don't take them as big as they are, you know? Sure. I just felt that it was like another me, yeah. and like, I just, like, went to Paris, but it was not to Paris for the Olympics, you yeah. know? So, so, yeah, I, I'm still trying to, like, believe that, you know? Yeah. It, I, I mean, it takes me a while, <laughs> but I know that I'm an Olympian now, and yeah. that I, was at the Olympics, I competed, and I'm part of uh, that like segment of uh, swimmers uh, that are the best of the world. Yeah. So yeah, um, I mean, I I just feel feel blessed, and uh, yeah, and I don't know. It's just like a weird feeling that you gotta like get that to your mind that yeah. you are like one of the best of the world sure. and so yeah <laughs> yeah no that's awesome and I, I think it seems like you have a, a pretty good healthy grasp on it all I mean I think that with the mindset of treating it like all right it's just another meat um I think that probably you know maybe helps relieve a little bit of the pressure to yourself yeah. at the time yeah. and um yeah and I love that you said too you know coming back you're like okay the Olympics I did that great now I'm back at SIU and mm -hmm. I'm ready to be in the present moment and focus on these meets. Yes. Um, so what are, you, what, what are you most looking forward to for this swim season ahead? Yeah, I have new goals. I um, wanna finish strong. It's my last year at SIU, so I just wanna show the, the rest that I have. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I'm sure uh, we have more uh, to give this season. Uh, mm -hmm. We have more times to beat uh, new PBs hopefully and also uh, the final goal is go to NCAAs again um, so yeah I just uh, wanna um, have fun this last year uh, enjoy every single moment and uh, also get better and uh, that's yeah. always a goal and I'll, tr I'll 
try my best to make, make that possible. Yeah, fantastic. I love it so much. Um, we just have a few minutes left here. I would just love to ask if there's anything you you want to share from, from this experience, from, you know, the rest of your time swimming and coaching? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I think um, SIU, Jeff, and all the staff have done a really good job. Um, I really appreciate all the work that we all put on, on this program. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that uh, makes us grow as uh, people and also like as um, athletes. So I'm just very happy to be here. Uh, SIU has been my home these uh, past three years and it, it is always gonna be like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, it's just like, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, I'm so happy to hear that. We're, we're so glad to have you here at SIU in Carbondale. Jeff, any, any last word you want to throw out there for us? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> she's very modest. Yeah, um, you know, I can tell. As, an old lesbian, <laughs> as um, uh, she was our SIU's first first team All American swimmer uh, since 1988 last year. Awesome. Um, which could have presented her opportunities to go elsewhere. I mean, there, you mm -hmm. know, in the modern age of college athletics, transfers, transfer portal, I and mean, if you follow college athletics, you know, kids that find success in places. Yeah are looking for the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, so for her to commit to come back for her last year um, and, and to be um, to be motivated to, to do more after already having done so much, it's, it's exciting to, to start this year with her, with the whole team, um, you know, and uh, I think there's some, some big things ahead for, for her, for, for Saluki swimmers this year. Um, and she's, she's one of our, our leaders in the pool. So Amazing. we're excited. Cool. Well, thank you all just so very much for coming on today. Celia, Olympic swimmer, everybody, one of our student athletes from SIU. And yeah, thanks thanks for sticking around. Thanks for sticking with us Salukis here. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Jeff, thank you obviously for all the dedicated hard work you put into leading this awesome team. Um, you know, all these components make up the whole fabric of SIU, which contribute to the fabric of Carbondale. So just really, really pleased to have you all here. And thank you so much for, for all you're doing and keep at it. I wish you the best of luck in the NCAA tournaments. And yeah, hopefully we see you in the next Olympics as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in everybody. This has been Talk of the Town on WDBX 91.1. And we hope you enjoy the rest of your Labor Day. I'll chat with y'all next week. Thanks, bye.